Hey everybody, welcome back. So attention is a key topic in understanding transformer neural networks, which are the foundational model that's powering a lot of these LLM solutions that exist today. We are going to get to the entirety of the math behind transformers in due time. But in this video, I wanna talk about the math you need to master the concept of attention in a vacuum before connecting all of those pieces. And that's for two big reasons. The first one is that I think the concept of attention, once we've grasped it, is just a really, really cool topic and deserves its own time in the spotlight. And that's what this video is for. The other is that of all the topics that go into understanding transformers, attention by far was the most difficult for me to grasp. And so I wanna make sure that I'm thoroughly explaining it to you all. So as always, we're gonna have an actual example in this video, which is gonna be really, really basic. Here we have a bunch of reviews of food and movies, which look like this. In our example here, you'll see there's always six words. The fourth word is always either meal or movie. The second and third words modify that noun using different words for meal and different words for movie. And the last word is some sentiment. It's either the word good or bad if we're talking about a movie, and it's either the word divine or dreadful if we're talking about a meal. Our goal today is going to be predicting that final word, predicting that sentiment, given the first five words in the sentence. And so let's take a look at how an attention layer is going to achieve that goal. At a very high level, folks, an attention layer accepts a set of n vectors. In this case, the five embeddings corresponding to the five words that occur before the word we're trying to predict. And it also outputs a set of n vectors, each also corresponding to the words that we inputted in the beginning. Now, what's happening between this input and this output is exactly the secret sauce. If I had to say in one sentence the goal of an attention layer, it would be that it's trying to pass information between the input vectors, so between all these input vectors, such that the output vector for a token, for example, meal, has absorbed all the information from semantically related input vectors. So let's make that concrete using this little example here we have so far. What would we expect from the attention layer? What would we expect the attention layer to do in this example? The goal is to predict that final word, which is going to be some sentiment corresponding to a meal that is delicious and savory. Now doing that accurately requires knowing a couple things. It requires knowing what the noun is, knowing if it's a meal or a movie, and it also requires knowing what the modifiers on that noun are, namely knowing that it's not just a meal we're talking about, it's a delicious savory meal that we're talking about. So if I was the attention layer and I wanted to efficiently do my job of next word prediction, I would sure try to find a way to make sure that the two adjectives and the noun pay a lot of attention to each other's vectors because collecting all that information in one place is going to be really helpful in predicting what that final word should be. And that, folks, is exactly what happens. Here's a bit of a spoiler, and this diagram is going to come back at the end of the video, and it's going to make a lot more sense then, so don't stress about if all the words on this diagram don't make sense right now. We see here something called an attention weights matrix which tells each word in the partial sentence how much attention to pay to each other word in that partial sentence. So we see here that delicious and savory are paying the most attention to the word meal, and the word meal is in turn paying the most attention to one of the adjectives, namely savory. So we see that our conceptual understanding of what the attention layer should be doing if it's trying to achieve its goal of next word prediction, and what it actually ends up doing after we train that attention layer line up in this case. In a sentence, by combining these semantically related words, the attention layer helps the overall model most efficiently understand what the final word in the sentence should be. Now that we've got this down conceptually, let's move on to the more mathematical. But before we get onto full equation land, let's take a second to bridge this conceptual conversation with the upcoming mathematical conversation by thinking about what's happening visually in terms of the vectors that are associated with each word, also called embeddings. Imagine for a second the vector for the word meal in this situation. Before the attention layer, this vector or embedding represents some generic concept of a meal. Could be a good meal, could be a bad meal, something savory, sweet, salty, bland, spicy, anything really. Just some generic concept of a meal is what's being represented by this vector before it goes into the attention layer. Now, how do we best modify this vector using the rest of the words in the sentence? Well, as we saw, the learned attention layer knows that these adjectives placed before the noun are going to modify the noun in a very important way. And so as we saw, the noun pays attention to the adjectives and their corresponding vectors. So what that allows us to do, knowing that information, is that the embedding for meal, this generic meal, 
gets modified using the embeddings for savory and delicious and anything else that's modifying that meal to a more precise embedding in this embedding space, which represents the concept of a delicious savory meal. So a meal that is yummy, has a check mark, five stars, just this amazing meal is what's being represented by this new vector once we've allowed the original vector to be modified by the vectors for delicious and savory, which the attention layer told us are very related should be paid attention to by the vector for meal. And it's exactly, folks, it's exactly this more precise context-aware embedding that is going to help us predict that the final missing word in this sentence should be the word divine instead of the word good or the word dreadful, for example. Awesome. Now we've got this down conceptually, we've got it down visually, let's drill down into the math and see how an attention layer actually makes this happen. The answer, in very high-level terms, is through the power of these three matrices. One is called the query weights matrix, one is called the key weights matrix, and one is called the value weights matrix. Let's talk about the first two first. Both the query weights matrix and the key weights matrix project the embedding for each word, here I'm just calling that X, which live in some n-dimensional space. They project that into a lower dimensional space, here I'm calling that RK, where K is less than N. So if I multiply either of these matrices by any of the embeddings for any of these words, I'm gonna end up in some lower dimensional space here. Now, what is going on in this lower dimensional space? The query weights matrix and the key weights matrix are very intelligently tuned during the training process, such that if one word, such as meal here, would benefit from the attention of other words, would benefit from paying attention to other words like savory and delicious, then the query, the query vector for meal, which is that WQ times the embedding for meal, that query vector for meal is going to end up in a very similar part of the embedding space as the key vectors, as the key vectors for the words who it wants to pay attention to, such as the key vector for savory and the key vector for delicious. And very similarly, we define these key vectors as multiplying that key weights matrix by the embedding for savory or the embedding for delicious. These query vectors here, you can think of as kind of anchors that say, I'm gonna be here and any word who I want to attend to, who I need to care about in order to do next word prediction, should have their key vectors cluster around this anchor. And to measure quantitatively the closeness of these query and key vectors in this lower dimensional space, we just use this simple dot product. And to simultaneously take the dot products between all of the query vectors associated to all of the input words, and all of the key vectors also associated to all of the input words, we collect all of the query vectors in this big matrix called the query matrix. So each row is one of the query vectors. And just to recap, mathematically, each of these query vectors is the multiplication of the query weights matrix with the original embedding that we were passing into the attention layer. So that's collected in this query matrix Q. The key matrix is the same. Each row in this key matrix K is going to be one of the key vectors. So if we take K transpose, then they become the columns. And then if we multiply Q times K transpose, what does that end up doing? Well, we do q1.k1, q1.k2. We see that we're just collecting all of these dot products in a big square matrix, q, k transpose. Now the next step after we've collected all of these dot products is going to be we're gonna divide every single dot product that's been collected by the square root of the dimensionality of the lower dimensional space that the key weights matrix and the query weights matrix are projecting our embeddings into. Now this seems like a really random operation and I was pretty confused about it at first, but if you go back to the paper, which introduced transformers, and you look at the part of the paper where they explain why this is done, the reason is that that lower dimensional space can still be pretty high dimensional in real applications. And so we wanna control the size of these dot products so they don't get too big in magnitude, and therefore we're gonna be using this in order to control that size. And the reason controlling that size is important is because of the last step we do, which is taking the softmax per row of this QKT divided by the square root of the dimensionality. Now what this does is this ensures that each row of this matrix is going to sum up to one. And the reason we want them to add up to one is so we can interpret each of the rows which correspond to each of the words in the partial sentence we passed in as telling us how much attention out of a total amount of attention of 1.0 to pay to each of the other words in the input sequence. And softmax is not very friendly with massive positive or negative numbers. That's why this division by square root of D is important to keep everything kind of controlled there. Now it makes a lot more sense why the rows are labeled the query word and the columns are called the keyword because now we know about the notion of query weight matrices and key weight matrices. And now you'll see that each of the rows here does add up to one because of that softmax. 
and now you see exactly what that score means mathematically. The higher that score is, the more attention each of these query words should be paying to each of those keywords. Finally, folks, what do we do with these weights? And that's where that final matrix we talked about, that value weight matrix comes in. The value weights matrix is going to map each word's embedding into that same dimensional space. And the output that comes out of after you multiply the value weights matrix by the embedding X for any given word is going to represent the update that this word will provide to any other word who attends to it. So there's a little bit to unpack there. So let's take this concretely. We have some original vector for meal, as we talked about before, that just represents some generic concept of a meal. It could be good, bad, sweet, salty, spicy, whatever. How do we actually know mathematically how to update that original vector for meal into the final vector for meal that's coming out of the attention layer? Well, we are going to use the WVX or the updates, the update steps of the words who I should pay the most attention to. So we know from the previous step here in the attention weights that if I am the word meal, hey, I better pay attention to the words delicious and savory. That's what I've learned from the attention weights. And so now I say, okay, for the word delicious, I'm going to take its update vector, which is given by this value weights matrix, and I'm going to use that to take some step in this dimensional space, in this RN dimensional space. Now, what other word do I need to pay attention to? Well, the word savory. The attention weights told me to pay attention to the word savory. So I'm going to take another step in that dimensional space, and I do that for every word that I should pay attention to. And crucially, I do that proportional to the amount that I should pay attention to it based on these numbers that add up to one for my row in the attention weights matrix. And finally, I'm going to use all those updates given by the value weights matrix to get to this updated place, this updated embedding for meal in the embedding space, which now, if everything went well, is going to represent this concept of a specific delicious savory meal. And it's exactly this embedding that's going to help me very well predict what the sentiment should be. Because this embedding here has absorbed all of the information it needs. It's absorbed that we're talking about a meal, it's a delicious meal, it's a savory meal. And so this embedding here should be super, super helpful for me, or rather the model, in terms of determining what that final sentiment should be, in terms of determining that the next word should be divine. Let me take a second to just pause here. Some of you who have read the attention is all you need paper or studied attention from other sources might be a little bit confused here on why I said the value matrix WV is an n by n matrix instead of a k by n matrix where k is in that smaller dimensional space from before. If you have that confusion I have left a note for you in the description but suffice to say that this formulation here is equivalent to the formulation you might have learned. It's just more of a matter of bookkeeping. And personally, I find this formulation a lot more easier to understand conceptually, but again, they are the same formulation. So let's recap the math here, folks. Everything is powered by these three matrices. The query weights matrix tells us how to project each word's embedding into a lower dimensional space where those query vectors act as anchors. The key weight matrix tells us how to project each word's embedding into that same lower dimensional space where those key vectors cluster around the anchors which they are semantically related to. So they provide the context around those anchors. We quantify all that information into an attention weights matrix, which tells each word how much to care about or attend to each other word. The value weights matrix, finally, is going to be saying, if you care about this word, here is an update to apply in order to fine tune your own embedding into a more specific embedding which is going to help us achieve our goal of predicting the next word. And that first part again, which is if you care about this word, is answered by those attention weights from before. And if it wasn't already obvious, these weights, all of them, the query weight matrix, key weight matrix, value weight matrix, are all learned and updated and tuned during training time in order to do what we want them to do to best predict the next word in this case. And that, folks, is conceptually, visually, and finally mathematically how attention works. The truth is there's a lot more to say about the story of attention, including how attention actually cares about the order of words that you pass in, because right now it's treating all those words more like a set than a sequence, if you realize through this entire process. We should also talk about the concept of multiple heads of attention. Everything we talked about here we could say is one head of attention, but what does multi-headed attention mean? Another thing we could talk about is why the whole process we talked about today is more correctly called self-attention and what the other kinds of attention are. But let's save all those for upcoming videos to not make this too big. 
and we'll definitely talk about all those offshoots if you are interested. If you like this video, folks, please, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments or questions are always welcome in the section below, and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.